Hi and welcome to my little tattle room again where I do all my bits and bobs and uh, I've got quite a few big weeks coming up really because I've got um, I've got the Masters World Championships in Zagreb in a few weeks and I've got a lot of pole rigs to make and as you know I love making pole rigs no I don't, I hate it I absolutely hate it, it's a proper chore to me but they've got to be done you can buy them in shops nowadays and they're, they're pretty good to be fair you can buy you know different things all made up so it makes your life a lot easier but i prefer to make them myself and i prefer to make them myself for a simple reason i can use the float i want the line i want the rubbers i want the shot or stocks that i want it's really important to me so that i can actually put everything together that i'm happy with when i'm fishing with so i thought why am i in my little room making me so I think I've got about 60 to make, which I'm really, really looking forward to. Uh, I thought I'd show you how I make one to make life a lot easier. And what you need to start with to make your rigs is, a, is these series of, uh, of things. You need some line, uh, different sizes, and that's what I'm trying to say to you, that uh, I use different lines. Short, I use these stocks. I use these comic ones, these stocks for... Uh, because they're a bit smaller than not just a gnats just a little little bit but whether they're more pure lead i'm not quite sure but i really like them the cormic ones the float that i want which is really important a different shape a different shape i'll go more into that in a bit a winder that where the float fits into the winder so it's not stuck out where it's going to break the bristle or overlap in the bottom where it's going to break the bottom it wants to fit snugly inside that winder then a pair of scissors six inch roller which i'll talk about your rubbers for the bottom of the pole flows and a levy peon bow which is my favorite bit of kit to take the shot off if i put too many so i've got all my stuff there already so how do i do it well the first thing is i want the flow what i've done if you saw one of my earlier videos i always get clear nail varnish hardener i cover all the body below the bottom of the bristle and the bottom of the body just simply so it doesn't sink sometimes you get floats that just sink sink like that they get a bit of water in them it's only a little bit but when it goes under there's nothing worse than when it goes under you take a shot off it's never right after that so i always cover it in nail varnish and i showed you on an early video that that's what i want to do so the float is really important what kind of shape do i like <clears throat> well to me a pole float the bristle is the most important thing i look at the bristle because the body and most pole floats are very similar there's only three or four different styles they're all colored different look a bit different but i prefer that kind of shape for still waters it's a bit like a rugby ball maybe a little bit fatter but the bristle to me is really important so when i'm fishing for silvers i probably like a grade less than this maybe a, a one mil this is a one and a half i'm just fishing in the margins and for carp probably a two mil but because i'm winning a venue that's carp and carasio i might need a mixture of both so <clears throat> i'm going to set them up with that with one and a half mil but the bristle to me is really important the bottom of the float is that's fiberglass uh, i like fiberglass for me i don't know why i just do Kept there's no wrong with carbon. Uh, I don't like wire stems for still waters unless it's really windy. But on rivers, I'd always use a wire stem one because it's more stable. But on a still water that's nice and not a lot of room, I prefer a glass bottom float. So, all I do, I, what do I do to attach that? Well, you've got some pole rubbers at the bottom. <clears throat> what I do with these, I cut them, I cut three, and I cut them roughly so to half a centimetre long and one a bit longer than that. So I cut three and one about half a centimetre a bit longer. So uh, uh, three quarters centimetre, sorry, just a little bit longer. I'll explain that reason why. So I'm going on a, on a venue where it's carp and carasio. So I'm going to set them all up to 0.16. That's a true 0.16 so the line is important this one i'm trying to say about building your own pole float i can have the line that i want the float and everything that i want so the first thing is this i'm going to put the float to the line and all i do you've got an eye now the eye position of the eye is really important i want it right at the top of the body you can see that i don't want it on the bristle if it's on the bristle it tilts when you when you try to hold it back so i want it right at top of the body and the bottom of the bristle that's really important 
And all you do, what I try to do, I try to get a dark background, either my trousers or in this case I've got my book, so I can do things because light, because your line is light and all your other things are quite pale. So I use that so I can actually thread everything through and it's easy. At the end of the day, the, try and make things nice and easy. Then what I've got, I put the two smaller rubbers on and I always put them on individually. So I thread the line through and what I do, I put the first one on. And what I, what I do here, I, I put the, the rubber on. Now you want, when you put these rubbers on, you want them just tight. You don't want them slack so they're moving up and down. You don't want them too tight because they'll bust. So make sure you get the right one. When I put it on the bottom, I wet my fingers and I wet up the float so, the, so it, the rubber runs up nice and smooth without causing friction. And I want it just below the bottom of the body. And the next one is really important. Again, it's the same size one. And what I do with that one, I put that in the middle of the, of the glass bottom. Now, the reason why it's in the middle is this. If it's on the end like that, when you pull that, you can see that it bends and look at the line. It's not holding the, the, the body right and it's not holding the rig right. So what you do with that one is put it into the middle and put it smack in the middle like that and it can't bend. It won't bend the body. What happens if you bend the body, it spins in the water while you're bringing it through. So the last one, the third one. Now, this is the important one, in my opinion. And the reason why it's just a little bit longer than the others is this. When I put it on, what I want it to do, let me just turn that round. There's always one that's a problem. So you put that on like that. Now this is really important. What I do, you don't put it on the, on the bottom of the body or the bottom of the thing. What you do, you overlap it a little bit. So it's halfway like that, it's just halfway. Because if you put it all the way on, what happens is the line doesn't come from the bottom of the float. So if you put that on like that, and it's halfway up, up the, it, it doesn't pull from the bottom of the float, it pulls from the side of the float, and that's really important, I think. And again, you get spin. So all I'm trying to do is eliminate problems. So what I do, I put it halfway in the, in the, rubber and then it's coming directly from the bottom of the float and I think that's really important. Then what I do, I just pull them tight, just have a look, make sure that they're all right and then what I'm going to do, I'm now going to put my stots on. So to shot it, the first thing I do, I put the telltale shot on. Now the, the two telltale shots for commercial, which I'm going to put on, are the most important tool shot. Now I never change from this, I always I get one and I put it on and I put two on. Now you can see me using my teeth, I've done it for 50 years, but if not get a little little pair of pliers and and you can put them on with the pliers. So the first thing is I put the, the two droppers on. Now they never change, they never change them two droppers. Whatever happens, they stay they stay on the line. What I've got to do now is put enough shot on now to cock the float. So what I'm going to do, because I'm using a float that's half a gram, I think that's going to be about five or six number eight shot. I like to put between four and six shot on my bulk. It's just a nice number. And, and all I'm going to do then, I'm just going to put them on. So so I've got quite a few on. I'm just going to put, I'm going to put five on to start with and then, then we'll go from there. Now you might ask me why I'm using stots and not shot, but I do use shots sometimes. And what I tend to do, I tend to use stots and commercials and I use shot when I'm fishing for roach on rivers and places like that. And I don't know you're gonna know, you're gonna ask me why now. I just think it's a bit better. I think, I think shot are better in running water. I don't think there's no, no kinks on them, no uh, square bits, they're perfectly round. But I think in still waters, it makes no difference whatsoever. And of course, stots, because you're using thick line, like 016, 018 and 020, stots are a lot easier to put on. Stots are a lot easier to put on in bigger lines. So what I've done, I've put five on. Now then, how am I going to test them? I've got a spaghetti jar. 
and a spaghetti jar is a great a great piece of equipment simply because right i can put the shot on all the line and the flow and it'll cock up so all i'm going to put that in to start with now that is just below the bristle that's just not quite right so i need to put some more shot on if it had sank what i would have had to do is take some shot off and that's where my levy piombo comes in but in this case is i need to put and at least one more shot on so you just put them on it's all trial and error and what you find out is when you've done four or five of the same flow you get used to it now then that's not far off that that's not far off and you might say well, what's not far off i can still see quite a bit of bristle stuck out so i reckon that's just about spot on just about that why because when i shot the pole float i shot it to the bottom of the bristle not the top a lot of people shot it as though they're going fishing with it normally i like it to shot right at the bottom of the bristle a little bit up's okay for the simple reason is when you're fishing you've only got a bit of line there and the weight of the line don't come in effect when you're going fishing you're five or six foot a line that makes a difference because the weight of the line especially when it's like oh 16 or 18 or oh 20 will pull the bristle down and if you have it dotted down you have to take a shot off when you get fishing so what i prefer to do is if i think it's not quite right is add one before i take one off so all is cocked at the bottom of the bristle that's just what i do i'm not saying it's right it's just what i do so when i get to my peg i put the six footer line or whatever it is right and that line will then sink it down perfectly now because i think that's a perfect float now and a perfect setup all i'm going to do is this i'm going to put the float further up like that and I need to move all the shot up now. I need to move all the shot up out of the way. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to move them all up out of the way. Then what I do, I just cut the bottom two or three inches off. For simple reason, that's where all the shot have been and that's where I've been pruning them on. So that's that done. Then I'm going to make a loop in the bottom. Now this is really important this because I don't make a little loop. Most people make a right little loop, but a little loop doesn't fold on itself. It sticks open, so it spins in the water when you're bringing the rig back. So I never make this loop really small because I want it to go flat when you're fishing. If it goes flat, it means that it won't spin coming back. So I'll make it about three quarter an inch or even one and a half centimeters long. And then what, what I do, I pull it tight, wet it, pull it tight, and then I just cut it off. And then that way, I've got a nice size loop, like that, nice size loop, which is perfect. Then what I do, I want the shot in the position that I want them. I get the first telltale shot, which is the number 10, and I put that at the side of the, the loop. So I've got the loop and the first telltale shot. Now usually when you're using this type of flow, you'll be fishing with a 15 centimetre, six inch up length and what you'll do is that's six and then my next dropper is going to be six inches this is a great piece of fishing equipment trust me a ruler is a fantastic piece of fishing equipment because you can measure it and get all the dimensions right i just get a six inch ruler or a 15 centimeters and the next shot comes in that in the six inch ruler just place it like that so it's six inches apart and i've got six and six six inch up length six inch droppers so my two droppers now are on so the bulk the rest of the shot guess where that goes and guess what distance it is i put my second dropper on the ruler and my bulk six inches above that so basically you've got six 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 three sixes or if it's under three foot deep it'll be four 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 and that's all you've got to do and nearly all my rigs are done that way if you're with my box all my rigs will either be 444 or 666 depends on the depth now the bulk a lot of people they might have a little gap of like a little bit they like a little gap i got a problem with that i don't i just push them all together and it's straightforward and that's my rig it's as simple as that. i know it's perfect so all i do then because i i don't want to put my up length on until i go fishing because i don't know which one i'm going to do i don't know which style of fishing i'm going to do all I do then, I just put the loop around the top and I wind it on. When it comes to the float, it wants to be in the biggest section of the winder. So 
it's the body is set inside and and protects it like that so you can't see it so it protects it and it wants to be like i said before inside that winder and then what i do the size of flow determines how much line i go on and all i do basically i go like that that's six foot add two foot for a bit of security a bit of measure cut it off like that cut it make your loop again and then wind it on so all i'm, all I'm doing is protecting the rig protecting the float and all i'm going to do then is i'm going to put that onto my winder and that's all that i do so all i'm going to do wind it on now like that it's all nice protected when it's a, it's a side winder so all i'm going to do i'm going to put the loop around that clip there and that's put it around the clip that, that slides up and down and it's going to protect it and all I'm going to do then is that. And that's my rig. That's the perfect rig. But the beauty, the beauty about that is I've got the float that I want. I've got the line that I want. I've got the shots or the stops that I want. So for me, it's the perfect rig. It don't get any better than that. I ain't got to buy one, adjust it. I've got to rely on what people are making up in the factory or whatever. That's just, for me, the perfect rig. And I'm happy with that. Just try it. It's nice and simple. You've got all the things there. You're sat at home. You've got a bit of music on. Well, I ain't got it on today because I don't want you hearing me singing. But that's the perfect rig and I'm really happy. Only 59 more to go.